Good afternoon and welcome to the Living Well radio program. You can find us here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on KATB 89.3 in Anchorage as well as KJLP 88.9 in Palmer. And you can also catch us online at KATB.org. My name is Cammie and once again I am joined by my lovely co-host Betty. How are we doing over there, Betty? I'm doing well. You know, it's actually warm in here today. Uh, quite warm. Uh-huh. We're not used to this. Did you submit a complaint or something? Or how <laughs> no, did no, that maybe, happen? maybe we paid the bill. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe quite that's unusual. It. it definitely is. Well, I'll tell you what. We are so excited to have a packed studio. Do we have a packed studio we or have what? A packed studio. <laughs> oh my goodness! And these are no strangers to you, are they, Betty? None whatsoever. In fact, why don't I let you do the honors of? Uh, it is my honor to introduce these ladies. Um, Alaska Christian Women has a blog, and we are very honored and very pleased to have three of our writers in the studio this afternoon. Uh, we have Rosalind. That's me. Carol. That's me. And Jen. That's me. And what we're going to do right now is just let them introduce themselves, tell a little bit about themselves, and what day they write on. So, Rosalind, you want to start? I'm Rosalind. I write on Wednesdays, and I had a really fun time trying to think of what I would tell you that you wouldn't know from my blog. Um, Most of my blogs are pretty serious, but I'm actually not all that serious in real life. Um, My favorite things are carbs and condiments. Uh, My favorite song to sing in the shower is Clay Aiken's Mary Did You Know? (laughs) And um, the worst compliment I've ever received was this guy I knew as a little kid saw me in public when I was probably like 16, and he said, wow, I really thought you were going to be the ugly sister. I'm like, that's probably the worst compliment you could ever tell a person. (laughs) Uh, That's about it. (laughs) Wait a minute. You forgot one thing. You told me you always wanted your readers to know that your spiritual gift was humor. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll hear more about that later. Probably. Carol? I'm Carol. I write on Fridays, and I, well, I'm a wife, a mother, and a piano teacher, but probably what I'm, my friends know me for is I hate dressing up. Um, hoodies <laughs> and jeans are my go-to glamour gear. And I like that. <laughs> I think we all can agree with that. I think we're all wearing a hoodie. <laughs> Jen? Um, I'm Jen. I am also a wife. And a mother. Um, I write on Tuesdays, and uh, I don't particularly <laughs> like to dress up either. <laughs> I like hoodies as well. Um, I have uh, two boxers and two cats and two kids, but one husband. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> that works out well. Works out well. And if I'm not mistaken, Jen, you were one of the first writers mm-hmm. to start with the blog did. That's correct. <clears throat> and how long have you been writing? Oh, gosh. Um, I started writing about 10 years ago, but I didn't really publish anything until about four years ago. So, And you are a published author, are you not? Correct. I've written some novels. Do you want to sh- tell us about that? Uh, just really briefly, I have a few historical romance novels. Um, they are for sale on Amazon, but I don't think they're on sale anywhere else at this point because I'm not really pursuing novels mm-hmm. right now. So, <laughs> So, girls... Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I want you to answer this question. Dun, dun, dun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide that you enjoyed writing? I think for me, it was when I realized that um, I could fudge my way through some tests in school without, it's true, without actually reading what I needed to. If I could just like fancy up my response on the test, I did pretty well on essay questions, but not so good on multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <That's> <laughs> okay, Carol. Um, I think I started enjoying writing when I read the Anna Green Gables books when I was a little kid. And she really glamorized writing and made it sound really fun. And I think it kind of went from there. But then I stopped for a while when life happened. You know, you get married, you have kids, you have a career. So that kind of killed it until Betty talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's when everything changes, I isn't know. it? You yeah. Tell her no. <laughs> that, that's a good quality to have. Your kids don't have it. And my but, kids don't have a problem do. with that. <laughs> Jen. Um, oh, I loved writing way back in grade school. I loved book reports. Anytime teachers would assign book reports, I was so excited. <laughs> I don't know what my problem was, but I loved it. So, um, And then just on up through high school, I, I wrote a poem once that I can't remember the details, but somehow it got sent to the president of the United States, and I thought I was pretty hot stuff because I got a letter stuff. back. <laughs> so wow. that's pretty cool. That is yeah. neat. <laughs> See, wow. I sent a poem to a magazine when I was a kid and got rejected. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
So I want to ask you, each one of you, um, I would imagine that writing for a blog is a little bit different than maybe writing a book report or even writing or publishing a book. Was it difficult to start putting yourself out there through writing through this blog? It still is. (laughs) Every week when I sit down to write, I think, like, am I going to say too much? Are they going to think I'm crazy? Is this only going to make sense to me? Um, How is this going to be honoring to the Lord? Um, I worry about, like, sharing details of my personal life that would be offensive to somebody. Like, Mm -hmm. you try and leave it vague enough that it doesn't, um, you know, you're not saying, hey, this is what happened with so-and-so, but it's enough that somebody else can relate to it. Um, And it's still, like, putting yourself a little bit of vulnerability. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's tricky for me every week. I'm like, oh, okay, What's the balance between (laughs) being transparent and open and and honest? Yeah. (laughs) Okay, yeah, exactly. (laughs) How about for you, Carol? Is that tough? I think the biggest thing I had to overcome was a fear of man. Mm-hmm. What are they going to think of me when I put this out there? Mm-hmm. Do I have my ducks on the ro- in a row so I can prove that what I'm saying is truth? Mm-hmm. That's scary. And mm-hmm. then once you hit that publish button, it's out there. It's done. You can't really retract it. That's mm-hmm. hard. I mm-hmm. would imagine. Definitely. Jen? Um, well, I ac- had actually written for a couple other blogs before I talked to Miss Betty. And so I had a little bit more practice. But I mm-hmm. think for me... Um, because those blogs were in other locations. I think being that this one's um, focused on Alaska and Alaska women, um, and I knew a lot of the readers would be people from, you know, my hometown, my church, my... Mm -hmm. And and so for me, it was hard because I... Even if I was vague, Mm -hmm. (laughs) people would still know enough about me that it would, um, you know, it's personal information. (laughs) And so... Yeah, that's it brings it to a whole different level when it's local, right. very exactly. local, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys remember what your first blog post was on Betty's blog, the Alaska Christian Women's Ministry blog? I do. I was actually thinking about it earlier. Um, I don't remember what I intended on writing, but when I sat down to write, and it's going to choke me up, I opened my Bible, and it was a picture of the baby that we lost under some scripture of my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And so that's what I wrote about because I wasn't expecting to see that when I opened my Bible. Um, every Sunday we went to church, I'd find the ultrasound picture. So one day I got tired of looking at it and just kind of shoved it in my Bible somewhere. And then that day I opened it to, and I'm like, well, I guess this is the day I was meant to find it. And I was tucked under that perfect verse. So that wow. was my first thing. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was really tough. Yeah. Yeah. Carol, do you remember what your first blog post was? I don't remember my exact first one, but I know that in the beginning I wrote a lot about um, our family's experience with my husband having brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And that writing was very healing. It Mm -hmm. helped me um, sort out the story that had happened to us in that past year. And it was very therapeutic to see Mm -hmm. our trials being used to help other people. Mm -hmm. You can relate to that, Rosalind, too, writing through that tragedy. Yeah, definitely. And then there's still times that... Um, you know, Jen McKinney will run an old blog because I haven't had a chance to write and I'll look back on what I've written and I'm like, wow, I needed that reminder today. And it's sometimes like, I can't believe I wrote that because <laughs> I needed to hear it just as much today as I needed to get it out back then. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. That's neat it how always, God works. It always amazes me how the blogs uh, touch the lives of so many people, people that we don't even know. And even when I read them, I go, wow, I needed that. I know. And God is so good about that, mm-hmm. how he puts different thoughts or or different things in our ways to Mm -hmm. encourage us from other people um how just how do you get inspired to know what to write well wait a minute jen didn't tell us i'm sorry (laughs) Sorry, i just jumped right in there (laughs) hang on to that question because that's a good question Okay, Jen. What was the question? My first oh. post, right? <laughs> Never mind. She just failed. Yeah. No. I don't. no. What was your first blog post on the Alaska Christian Women's Ministry? Do you remember? Yes, I do. Um, um, I wrote about the power in the name of Jesus. Is mm-hmm. what I wrote about. And um, for me, when I was first starting, I was more focused on things that moved me and more things uh, that I was learning that weren't quite so personal. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I kind of was just testing the waters to see. Um, who was interested in reading and kind of, you know, because it was just getting started. So, Mm -hmm. Sure. Awesome. Very good. Now, Betty, go ahead. (laughs) Thank you, (laughs) Cammie. So how do you get your inspiration? Where do you get your inspiration, maybe I should say, for what you write on the blog? I pray a lot. Like, Lord, at first I started praying, you know, what do you want me to write about? And then Mm -hmm. I 
come to realize that it's more like, Lord, what do you want to teach me through this? And what do you want me to write about what I'm learning? Because it's more, this whole process has been such a learning experience for me, not for me, like, what am I going to tell other people? But Lord, what are you telling me that you want me to share? Um, So I just pray a lot about what I'm supposed to write. And there's times that I don't even know what direction I'm going to go until I start writing. And then I'm like, oh, that's not what I thought I was going to write about at all. (laughs) Carol? Um, A lot of it comes from life. Um, Sometimes my kids are the inspiration questions Mm -hmm. they're asking me. Um, Sometimes it's what I'm, what God's showing me in personal Bible study. Or sometimes he'll point me in a direction for six to eight weeks on one particular theme that maybe he's not so much trying to teach the uh, readers, but he's trying to drill Mm -hmm. home to me that uh, you need to learn this, Carol. You need to get this figured out. Uh, Right. I totally agree that that's basically the same for me. Um, I try to focus on um, what recent lessons God has tried to been teaching me, not that I've learned, but that I am learning Mm -hmm. um, or uh, experiences that I've gone through that I know other women can relate to, such Mm -hmm. as rejection or, you know, mom (laughs) issues or things. So it kind of depends on just in that moment when I'm sitting to write kind of what's going on around Mm -hmm. me, what just happened or what's about to happen or, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So when I asked you guys what your first blog post was, it sounds like several of you, it was just through um, just a real tragic thing that had happened in your life. And so that might be the same answer to this next question, but I'm just curious, what was the most difficult thing that you guys have written about so far? It's hard to nail down any particular thing. Um, I would say a friend had asked me what it's like to have a rainbow baby and a baby is a baby that you have after a loss. And I think I would say that was probably my hardest one because it was hard for me to to put into words what was on my heart. Like I never really tried to explain that because I tried to just kind of put those thoughts on the back burner. And so to sit down and write it out after she'd asked me, um, it really made me face all that I was mulling over in my heart. So I think that one was probably one of the hardest. And I think any of the times I write about my dad, that's hard for me too. Mm. Um, I think the time when I wrote a synopsis of what happened when my husband had a seizure, which led to an ER visit, which led to the diagnosis of brain cancer, I I clearly remember sitting at the computer and sobbing while I was writing Mm -hmm. it because it brought back memories that were very still fresh. You know, it was only about a year after the whole incident that I wrote it, but yet it was so healing to get it out there. Mm -hmm. And I think through all that, God gave me a phrase that I've said over and over and other women have said, oh, yeah, I needed to hear that. But that's pain is pain. Mm-hmm. The pain that I experienced with my husband going through that and how it impacted our family, it has given me an ability to understand other people's pain. It's not mm-hmm. the same. It doesn't have the same name, but it's still pain. Mm-hmm. And through writing, I think that's really given what we went through with my husband's health issues. It gave it a purpose. Mm-hmm. It kind of redeemed it for me. And that mm-hmm. was through the writing. Jen, do you have anything you want to share? Yeah, in that regard, um, what what was? That? Has there been something that just um, up to this point, or just a really difficult topic that you okay. knew God laid on your heart, but it's just really difficult to kind of get through writing about it? Um, yeah, for me, it, the hardest ones were um, the ones that I wrote about my marriage mm-hmm. and uh, just the things that my husband and I had experienced um, and reaching the point where we almost considered divorce and um, same kind of issue. Those were super painful um, just to sort through and super healing to write. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so I would like to add a little bit to that. Um, I know that it was very painful um, for y'all to write these posts. We talked about it quite a bit, but the response mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. How many women's lives it touched, how many spoke that it helped to know that someone else mm-hmm. um, had been through it, had had made it to the other side, and there was many, many thanking these ladies for being so real, mm-hmm. so transparent, yeah, and uh, putting their fears mm. uh, on paper and um, their worries. It was a big help, a big blessing to a lot of women. I think it's amazing to look and see now that the trials are over, like how good God was through all of it. Like when you're in the midst of it, you just hold fast to those promises that he gives you. And you're like, God, I know you're good, but I don't understand this. And then to be on the other side of it and not completely through some of the things, but on the other side of it, it's just like amazing to see 
wow, God, you really have used this for good. And in so many ways, I never even imagined. Um, and then now you're using my testimony to bless other women. It's just amazing to think you trusted me with this, to do something powerful with this. Yeah. yeah. I think all of us have been amazed at the success of the blog and how many are reading it. I, When we started this, we never dreamed that um, it would go as far as it has and mm-hmm. um, as many would be reading it. And it's just been all because of God. He's opened Absolutely. up door after door after door mm-hmm. and um, brought in these amazing writers uh, to share their lives with the other women. Yeah. And it's amazing to think, like, I don't know that I um, have the knowledge, you know, or the ability, but I'm willing, and God will use whatever mm-hmm. he wants to do with that. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what I found unique about this blog, too, was that um, you guys were all willing to write through the struggles Mm -hmm. and what God was teaching you. And I think so often what we read in these daily devotionals, which are awesome, they're Mm -hmm. powerful, they're very inspiring, but it's typically well on the other side of the struggles Mm -hmm. that they're reflecting on that. And so I want to thank all of you for Mm -hmm. just being so vulnerable to to write through those difficulties, because I think it's really refreshing for us women to read while you're going through that and what God is speaking to you in the trenches Mm -hmm. of life because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. What do you ladies hope that that the women will do or feel after reading your blog? That's probably a weird, weirdly phrased question, but do you kind of think about that as you're writing it? You know, what is it I wanna convey to the reader and what do you kind of hope that they'll take away from overall your blog posts? Um, I think for me, it's just that I hope that whatever I have to share glorifies the Lord that it won't be so stuck on myself or whatever I'm going through but more so like look at how good God has been through whatever the blog may be about and um, my hope is that people that are reading it just because they're curious what I'll say will start to be more curious about the Lord not just about what I'm writing Um, because I know there's more people than I can even imagine that are reading and they don't they may not know the Lord but they they know who I am and so they want to like what did Rosalind say today well what did God say through Rosalind so that's just my hope that somehow I'm doing exactly what God wants me to do and I'm kind of taking myself out of it. Yeah. Um, I think I want to challenge people to rethink their old traditions, Mm -hmm. the things they've always heard about God and the Bible and to really think through it for themselves. And if that means digging into the Bible for themselves and really studying it out to find those gems, then I think then I would say that would be a success. You mm-hmm. do that so well. <laughs> I love reading her posts mm-hmm. like that. She does a good job. Yeah. And I, I think for me, my goal, I guess I kind of have two. My, my first goal would be to instill hope because mm-hmm. there is so much tragedy. Life is hard. Mm-hmm. And I think that if we can talk about how life is hard, but we're still really trying to have a good attitude to serve the Lord, whatever, mm-hmm. Um, that that can offer hope to other women who might feel stuck or just super depressed or discouraged in their faith for whatever area they are mm-hmm. in their life. But then the other thing, too, is that um, we really need to be um, – it, it's not just enough to um, say, yay, I get to go to heaven. We really – you know, we – Christ didn't just come for that. He came to set us free from mm-hmm. b- all kinds of bondage, things that we don't even realize we have, lo- you know, locked ourselves in chains or, or whatever, or any, you know, possible traumas that may have happened. Like there's just so much. And what, what I hope is that um, I can convey that, well, first that there's hope, but then also that women would s- seek to know God on a deeper level mm-hmm. based on what I said or what I've experienced or what I've yeah. learned or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yep. Well said. Absolutely. And I think we live in an age, too, where there's so much comparison and people put on this front of, like, this is what life is like. Or mm-hmm. So for us to be transparent about the things that we're struggling with, I hope it gives women the sense that, like, they're not alone in whatever hardships they're going through. Like, I hope that me showing a little bit of my craziness helps somebody else to be like, okay, I, I'm not the only one struggling with whatever this is. And um, it gives them hope to know that life's not all Pinterest and Instagram. (laughs) We are the jeans and hoodies of the blogging world. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Can I put in a plug for the blog? Sure, please do. Um, If you've never looked at it, just go to akcwm.blogspot.com and check it out. Or you can just go to our Facebook page. And, and like don't us forget a, to subscribe to it. That's It'll right. It'll show up in your email every day. <laughs> yes, I forgot that part. You can start your day thinking about us. <laughs> <laughs> All you do is go to our 
blog and subscribe to it. Mm-hmm. Put in your email address. You'll get a notice through email to um, click on this link, and you're all hooked up. You'll get it every morning, first thing. Very good. Love high tech stuff, huh? The ease I of it. D- if somebody's there to show me how to use it, yeah, I do. We'll help you. <laughs> so I know that you guys are quite the community of bloggers. Like you guys are pretty close. I want to know how do you guys inspire and encourage each other? Because it's not like you're competing. You definitely are a community. You guys love each other. You know each other. You do life together. So tell me a little bit about that. We have like a secret Facebook page that nobody knows about until Ooh. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and often um, we go in there for prayer requests like, hey, guys, I'm struggling with this. Can you pray for me? Or um, sometimes it's like, hey, I'm in a rut and I don't know what to write about. What are you guys thinking about this week? And um, Jen's really wonderful about, I've been praying for you. And just, She's the best hugger. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't mention that, but it's true. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday Jen posted a blog that was meeting a need that our family had just had. And so it was neat to be able to share her blog because it met the needs of these friends that we were praying for. So Mm -hmm. that was kind of neat. I love reading the other girls' blog. Mm -hmm. What I love is just that we come from such different backgrounds and we have different personalities and different gifts and different um, lifestyles. And I think it's it's just another way to prove that God can overcome anything because sometimes being different – makes people um not get along so well and and i think that we have really tried to um come together as a team and be unified because that's that's a huge theme in the bible Mm -hmm. as Mm -hmm. as believers in order to you know glorify god one thing that we have to have is teamwork Mm -hmm. so and i think we do that pretty well yeah so i know all of you ladies are super busy you all have children as you mentioned, you got a couple dogs in the mix. <laughs> How do you find time to get in the zone, as they call it, you know, to sit down and actually write and put the pen to paper or the fingers on the keyboard? Sometimes I write while I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 it's true. I texted somebody a picture. <laughs> oh, my she goodness. Did. That's great. It's true. <laughs> Uh, well, I have to schedule it. I, I'm a routine person, and life gets so crazy that if I don't have things kind of organized and laid out, then suddenly I'm out of time. And mm-hmm. I don't write well at 2 in the morning. I, I really write better um, during the day or first thing in the morning. So I need to schedule in my time, and I, I try to do that every week and make sure I've got that good two-hour chunk of time so that I'm able to get done. About mm-hmm. that. <laughs> and the notepad on your iPhone is a great tool for blogging. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. it is. <laughs> I just was listening to this podcast recently, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but this if anybody struggles with being able to set aside the time, he was t- talking about this browser thing that you can get, and it locks down all of your other browsers until you've typed 500 words. <laughs> That's genius, but what will they do with my kids? <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> you have to deal with them first, and then this I'm maybe. I'm holding three kids, and I'm still blogging. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Well, great. I mean, that's encouraging to hear. So I guess I want to ask, Betty usually asks this question, but just if there's a woman out there thinking, hey, you know what, I think I would like to write for this blog, but is feeling intimidated about whether or not they have anything good to say, what advice would you give that woman? If people are reading my blog, they probably will read your blog. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. It's true, though. (laughs) If God gives you a message and it's mm-hmm. burning a hole in your heart until you share it, then just ask God to help you overcome that fear. Because really, it's a fear of man that keeps us That's from true. doing these things that God wants us to do. So if we will just put it in God's hands, ask him to open the doors and give it to him. He'll open the doors and he'll make a way for you to share that message that he's burning in your heart. Mm-hmm. And then I would say... Um, get busy, get writing, get Mm -hmm. out there and, and learn how to be a good writer. Um, there's so many awesome resources out there and just keep practicing and just keep going. Don't quit. So, yeah. Jen, you recently went to a conference. Um, she speaks, is that the Mm -hmm. name of it? Correct. If you could just share with us, what's one of the main things that you took away from that conference and how you've applied it to your writing? Oh, to my writing. I actually didn't do the writer side of it. I did oh, the speaker did the side of it. Oh, you did the speaking side? Well, yes. tell us. Um, so um, for me personally, the one of the biggest things that I took away was that um, some of us um, some of us are called to the spotlight and some of us are called to the back row. And, mm-hmm. um, and it depends on what season of life that you're in. And we need to learn to be okay with what season that we're in. 
And um, actually, this was like the final event of the weekend, and we were praying, or we might have been singing worship songs right before prayer. And then I really felt God say to me, Jen, it's not your turn yet. Your turn is coming, but I want you to support other people right now. So that was the biggest thing for me. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. That's really cool that you had that opportunity. You met some pretty, pretty neat oh, women. Man, there, I had a good you? time. There were some really <laughs> amazing ladies there. I had yeah. an awesome time. Yes, it was great. So Betty, I'm going to put you on the spotlight with our last few minutes. What inspired you to create this blog? I mean, this is out of your element. And Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your inspiration behind wanting to get it started. Um, it was just a thought that I believe God put in my mind. I was had been reading uh, Proverbs 31. I'd been following their blogs, and I kind of got the idea that um, wouldn't it be something if we could do this? And we had it basically uh, all women from Alaska. Now, I will admit that every writer that we have for our blog is not in Alaska. We have one that lives in Tennessee and one that lives in Texas, but the rest of them are here in Alaska. And I thought it would just, it w would speak so much to the women that live here because, let's face it, Alaska has uh, its own little perks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's we do it in an Alaskan way. And mm -hmm. I, I thought it might mean more to people knowing that um, these women lived here. And so... We just jumped out there and did it. We started it, and we had one. I think I had two authors when we started. Uh, Jen I was one of the first ones, and it just kind of went from there, and I believe now we have eight, and uh, always looking for more. You know, if you're interested, just Facebook me or message me, and we'll get together. We have a, a training curriculum, so to speak now, if you will, uh, training classes that we put the women through. And uh, God is just blessed. I mean, we're in nine countries, which just blows me away. And the ladies are reading it, and they're being blessed. And these women are doing an amazing job. They're very real, very real, and uh, the very biblically sound. So I'm well, very I, proud of them. Absolutely. And I appreciate you bringing that up because that just allows us to put a little reminder out there because that's what Alaska Christian Women's Ministry is all about. It's right. all about bringing... Uh, local resources for women statewide to bring recognition to these organizations mm -hmm. and people, great women that are available right here in our great state. And that is the purpose that Living Well wants to serve as well, is just providing that platform for that message to get out. We've got some awesome things right here in our own great state. Right, And I would say to anybody listening, if you're looking for a speaker, any of these women would be a great speaker to their <laughs> women's group. I mean, they're She's sitting lying. here. She's <laughs> sitting here. They're sitting here laughing, but... Uh, these women have been through so much in their own personal lives and they're willing to share mm. how God brought them to the other side. And um, they would be excellent speakers. I would recommend them to any group. I have a recommendation for you, Roslyn. <laughs> I want to see your video blog from the bathroom. <laughs> well, I'll text you a picture. <laughs> hey, that would be unique. I mean, this is how a mom has to do I it, right? I thought about posting it, but then I was like, well, you can see my knees and maybe people will be weirded out by that. So I didn't. But I did send it to Betty. <laughs> Well, I'm queuing up the music, Betty. Why don't you tell us one more time where women can find this blog? AKCWM.blogspot.com. We're on there every day. Uh, something is posted, and I would just highly encourage you to go subscribe to it. And um, that's how you start your morning off, by having your coffee with these ladies. Great. Thank you so much. We just want to thank each one of you women for joining us here today. It's been a pleasure to get to know you, and I hope that we've provided that behind-the-scenes look at <laughs> Alaska Christian Women's Ministry bloggers. Thanks again for joining us today. And that is another episode of the Living Well radio program. And again, you can catch us here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on KATB 89.3 in Anchorage, as well as KJLP 88.9 on Palmer. You can also find us online at katb.org.